So we have seen that to determine whether we get CI or DI, we need to calculate the phase difference at a point. Now, there are several factors that can affect the phase difference. Now, first of all, if I have two sources, S1 and S2, and they are going to meet at a point in space P, I first have to consider whether there's any inherent phase difference between the sources. And we're going to call this the phase difference of the source. Right? Now, in the A-levels, a lot of times these sources will be in phase, in which case uh, this will be zero. But sometimes, on the odd occasion, the question may say that these sources are in antiphase, in which case the phase difference is pi radians. Right? But of course, the phase difference between these sources could be any value. Right? But in the A-levels, it's typically in phase or in antiphase. So that's the first thing that affects your phase difference uh, at a point. Uh, the second thing is basically how many reflections of hard boundaries that your waves may take. So basically the idea is very simple. Every time you reflect off a hard boundary, you will introduce a phase difference of pi radians. So for example, if I had a wave that goes something like this, okay, so this is my source, this is my point P, whatever, and the wave is a funny one. It goes like this, bounds, bounds here. You basically add pi here, you add pi here. And so this will introduce an additional phase difference of plus 2 pi, right? And so we can call this the phase difference uh, due to reflections. Now, finally, but also the most important thing, right, is there's also the phase difference due to something called path difference, which we are going to call delta L. Now, the path difference is simply the difference in the path lengths here and here. So, for example, if this was 5 meters and this was 6 meters, then your path difference would be 6 minus 5, which is 1. Now, how does this introduce phase difference? Consider a situation where the path difference is 0, means that this length here and this length here is exactly the same. In which case, if, let's say, the sources were in phase, then the waves would be doing an identical thing by the time they reach P. So a zero path difference means that there is zero phase difference due to that. But what if now I made things a little bit more interesting and I started to introduce a path difference? And let's say I now introduce a path difference exactly equal to one wavelength in which case I would be able to do one wavelength here and then do that. Notice that every time I introduce a path difference equal to one wavelength, so I could just extend this even more, I'm basically introducing a phase difference of 2 pi because I have another additional wave. And so things get interesting, right, if I start to introduce path differences that are in multiples of half a wavelength. So let's say I want to do one and a half wavelengths, in which case your wave now looks like this. So you have this extra half wavelength here. And look what happens. Oh my. Okay, now you are in antiphase. So basically, let me write this down. Every, you can think of it as every lambda of path difference introduced. Okay, this will give me a phase difference of 2 pi radians. Now, so a nice way to think of this is that the path difference, sorry, the phase difference due to path difference is basically your path difference divided by, as a fraction of the wavelength, times 2 pi. So to summarize, if I have two sources, S1, S2, and they want to meet at a point over here, the total phase difference at this point is due to three separate things. Number one, the phase difference at the source, plus the phase difference due to the number of reflections, plus the phase difference due to the path difference. And that's what we have for this one.